fabs and besties! Time for another Encanto-inspired video. Keyword, inspired. We are going to try to make a hidden doll room that looks kind of like the kitchen today. Before we start building the room, we have to make some of the accessories because they need time to dry. I'm using some yellow model magic that I picked up at the dollar store. Take a small amount, then let's roll it to make kind of a lemon shape, then roll it in the center so it's a little longer but smaller on the ends and about an inch and a quarter long. Then let's press it slightly, then turn and press it again. And we're trying to give it like little corners. Then holding the ends, let's just bend it slightly to make a banana. Make about 16 or so and allow them to dry. Take another ball of model magic. This one is slightly larger. And I'm gonna take a small piece, roll it to make a thin cylinder. Now, if you have white, that's even better, but I don't, so I'm using what I have. I'm gonna cut it at an inch and set it aside. Take the excess and roll it back into the ball. Then we're going to flatten it and trim it to make a one inch square. I use the edge of my palette knife to press little lines, trying to keep them evenly spaced. After going all the way down in one direction, we go in the other. Then carefully lift it and wrap it around the tube. Keep in mind, Model Magic loves to stick to itself. So you do need to be kind of careful because it's not incredibly forgiving and you will have to start over. So you've been warned. Let's kind of push the ends a little to make corn. Now I'm not so much worried about what the back looks like because we're gonna end up gluing them or stringing them all together. Make about seven to eight of these. Now I'm going to use a little air dry clay in white because I don't have any white model magic. If I had white, I would be using that, but I don't, so I'm using this. Take a small amount, making sure to close the rest up so it doesn't dry out. Roll the clay into a ball and then pick one side to roll a little more so it's kind of like uh, turning into almost an egg shape. I use a palette knife to kind of divide the top in half. We're gonna make a little indention there. Then we'll do another one at an angle. And then another angle. So we end up with like six sections. I continue the lines going down, pressing gently into the clay. Then lean the palette knife to the sides. So you're kind of like pushing the clay and making a nice little valley there. If it's getting too long, we can just press it back into shape. Gently add some lighter lines in each of the sections. Then go back with a tool with a rounder edge. And we're gonna just give a little soft indention on all of those little sections. I bought this little tool at the dollar store in the craft section. It has two different tools on the ends. I take the pointy end, which kind of looks like a needle, and I'm just going to kind of poke at it in the center. We can scrape some of the little pieces up to create some really good texture. To make garlic, I'm gonna put a little hole in the back so it's kind of like a bead but this is completely optional. Then allow it to dry. I made quite a few of those. Let's make a plate. I roll a small ball, then I flatten it and shape it into a circle. And of course you can use like cookie cutters and stuff like that. We're just doing this by hand because I like the whole rustic look. 
I place it onto a sponge and kind of push it in the center so the edges start to rise a little and give us a very shallow type of bowl, you know, like a plate. I'm using a sponge like a magic eraser that I found at the dollar store. When I get the shape that I want, I place it on my little drying station and press it down in the center. So the bottom of my plate is flat and use a tiny touch of water to smooth out some of those edges. We're gonna try something different. I'm gonna take a cylinder and some aluminum foil, wrap the foil around the cylinder, bend the rest around the bottom and shape it to make the shape of a vase. Cover it with clay. I use a little water to smooth it out. Let's trim the top and remove the excess clay. Pull it away at the top just to make a little lip and use water to smooth it out. All right, that's pretty decent. Now I'm gonna let it sit and dry. Let's try this again. This time I'm using a glue stick. I'm gonna wrap the whole thing in the aluminum foil and leave the top kind of open. Add the clay, trim off the top, roll the excess, wrap it around, smooth it out. Might need a little bit of water. Then shape the top so you have a little lip there. For me, that was definitely easier than trying to sculpt the foil first. Plus, once it dries, I should be able to remove it. If you have a mini pottery wheel, that might make everything a lot easier. I actually have one, I just haven't taken it out of the box yet, so we'll try that another day. But right now, let's start building the room. I sketched out a quick plan. We are gonna take some artistic liberties and we're gonna use foam board. I make our basic hidden doll room that is 13 inches high. This foam board was 20 by 30 inches, so I'm going to measure over 11 and a half on the sides, score a line on each side so we can make a trifold. Take the leftover foam board, place it inside the trifold, cut it for the floor, take a second piece of foam board, cut a piece of foam board the same size as one of the walls. For me, that was 13 by 11 and a half inches. And I cut several one inch strips as well. We need two cutouts on this wall, so let's sketch them out. I have an inset shelf and a window, and I'm gonna cut a window out of the other wall as well. I use an X-Acto knife to cut them out, then take the one inch strips and glue them behind. To get around the curve, I score several small cuts so it can bend. I cover the visible sides with scrapbook paper, including the front of the wall, and glue them in place. I cut a shelf from the leftover foam board to go right here. I cover it with a turquoise paper, and we're gonna glue that in place. After I framed out the window, I place it onto the wall for the room, trace around the inside, cut it out, take the cutouts from the window and cut them into thin strips, cover with paper. I glue thin strips into the cutout on the back wall for the hidden doll room and I'll glue two shelves into the recess wall once I glue this together, but that's gonna be later. First, let's cut a strip for the side and one for the top. For the strip that goes on the side, let's cover it with the same paper we used on the walls, then glue it right behind. Cover the piece for the floor with scrapbook paper. I'm using one that looks like tile. It's gonna end up looking something like that. Let's continue with this paper around the top, about six inches from the floor. I went around the window and also covered the back. 
This is a marble print. I thought it was a good base for like a textured wall look. I also put a square behind our little arched cutout. Then I sponge on a little acrylic paint. So hopefully it looks a little bit less like marble. I think that kind of worked. I glue a printable down that looks like a pile of wood six inches from the bottom in the center of the back wall. I like to stop and place things in the room to just get a feel of how it's going to look. Let's go ahead and build two counters. Take leftover foam board, draw a line at six inches, subtract the width of the foam board, cut on the line, cut an 11 and a half inch piece and two two inch pieces for the sides. Cut a two and a half inch piece for the top. Sketch another cutout. This one's gonna have a curve at the top, then go straight across. I made it a little lower and cut it out and also cut a little rectangle above it. I made a printable that looks like tile and we're gonna just cover that, glue on the sides and wrap them with paper. Make the archway just as before and this time I put wood paper in the back. I made two. One doesn't have an opening, and I am straying from the inspiration a little and taking some artistic liberties. I cover the top with another tile printable, and let's add some cabinet doors. I'm using the doors from our realistic kitchen cabinet video. I cut out the template and trace it onto cardboard, cut them out and cover with the printable, glue them onto the front. I use more printables for a backsplash, framing the cutouts. If you do not wish to use printables, you can always cut small squares of paper. And I guess we didn't need to paint that wall since we ended up covering it in tile. Now we can start gluing things in place. I start by gluing the floor into the box on two sides. Glue in our little wall right here, making sure it is over the window. Glue the shelves into the window, add the cabinets and counter. When I glue on the other side, I place a small piece of foam board underneath, then glue it on to give it a little lift. So when we close the hidden doll room, it'll clear the floor. All of our clay items are dried and I'm gonna add a little bit of brown to the center of the garlic, string them onto thread so we can hang them in the room but we might need to make a few shelves. Cut leftover foam board into rectangles and triangles, cover with paper, glue the rectangles underneath, then glue them onto the walls. Paint the pottery with acrylic paint or with nail polish. Begin placing it on the shelves. Add felt and artificial plants to some of the pots. I removed one of the shelves from the window so we had more space for the plants. Put a little stack of white plates underneath. Take some time painting one of the plates. I am trying to be neat with this, but doing horribly on camera. Add some more around the top. Not bad. Finish it off with a clear coat for a little shine, then place it right at the top. Lightly dust the bananas with a little green paint. Add a little touch of brown on the end, then maybe just brush on a little bit of brown here and there. I twist a paper bag and glue them on in three rows. Glue them onto the shelf. I brush the corn with a little white paint. Add white paint on the ends cut leaves out of a paper bag, glue them onto one end, glue them on a twisted paper bag, then add them to the room. Cut black cardstock, glue small strips onto a larger rectangle, brush it with a little silver paint, just so we can see some of that detail, then glue it onto the counter. Take one of our toilet paper roll pots from a previous video, and set it on top. Cover a small piece of leftover foam board with cardstock. Age it with a little paint I'm using green paint to make a book on the shelf. 
completing our Encanto-inspired kitchen. This project took me a little longer than I thought. I am totally out of time, but I would love to make an inspired doll of the dad. This is our model August, the kin soccer player on a made-to-move body. He doesn't have a mustache, but he does have the hair. I think I can take the top from this One Direction doll. At least I think it was One Direction. Pair it with some navy blue kin pants. Add some glasses for an instant inspired look. And now he's ready to give Mirabelle some fatherly advice. And no, he doesn't have a mustache, but we can always add that with face app. And if we put the other box room on the other side, we can see down the hallway to Isabella and Mirabelle's room. And when playtime is over, it all folds up for easy storage. Thank you for joining us for another Encanto inspired craft. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Don't forget to ring the bell and follow us on Instagram at my froggy stuff and the frog vlog and Bella of my froggy stuff. And we will see you next time.